Okay, uh, this is uh, the Windows 7 installation that I've done in a previous video. It is doing some updates. While that is going on, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Home tab, and we're going to install Windows Server 2008 R2. So we will go to create a new virtual machine, and as always, we are going to use the typical installation method. Once you get to the guest operating system installation, choose the option to install the operating system later so you get the most native experience. Do not let do not choose one of the other options or uh, Windows or virtual machine will try and, and create an answer file for you which will not give you the full experience of the installation. Go ahead and click next. Now we have the guest operating system choice here. We're going to install Microsoft Windows, but not Windows 7. So we will browse to Windows Server 2008 R2. Because we're using R2, this has to be a 64-bit version of the operating system that you're using as the host operating system. A 64-bit operating system will not install on a 32-bit host. So make sure that your machine is a 64-bit operating system and that you do have a 64-bit version of the operating system installed. We'll go ahead and continue. Now we will rename the machine and just like always in the classroom we use our first initial last name underscore what the operating system is so win 2008 r2 dash one one would be the instance number of this we will only use one server operating system so this will be the only uh, server instance for the supporting client operating systems class however in the future you might need more than one so get in the habit of putting an instance number at the end of the machine name go ahead and click next to continue the disk size we will change to 100 gigabytes and make sure that you store your virtual disk as a single file you can click next to continue these are the summary this is the summary of the operating system uh, settings we're going to modify this a little bit. We do have a Windows 7 instance running in the background. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throttle down the memory to one gigabyte of memory. That should be sufficient, sufficient to use in the classroom environment. You should be able to run a server and maybe an operating system or two besides. So knowing that we're going to use the operating system this operating server operating system in parallel with a client operating system so make sure that you throttle back the memory to a sufficient level I'm going to change the network adapter to be a bridged and replicated network connection this will make sure that the virtual network interface card has its own IP address on your network okay once we have finished that we can go ahead and close those settings and finish the wizard now inside of here we have the settings for the operating system but we do not have an operating system installed nor do we have anything in the DVD drive for this we will open up the DVD settings browse to an ISO image file and uh, you should have one on your desktop in the classroom however I will browse to a different location so I can locate the correct uh, ISO image and there it is okay now I do have the operating system all loaded up everything is ready to go I will power on the virtual machine and get the installation started this window here just 
informs you that the machine, the host machine has USB devices connected to it and the Windows machine will or the virtual machine rather will want to take control of those at times. So you can go ahead and just click OK. As before I will pause the video at different times to make the video as brief as possible. So here is one of those points. Okay here is the installation screen just like before once you mouse over the installation window the virtual machine installation window you'll notice that the cursor becomes a finger pointing hand here is the here is the mouse cursor in the window here okay as I was pointing out the mouse cursor here if you click on it while the hand is a finger point it will give the virtual machine focus and you can move the mouse to change the focus from the virtual machine to the host machine simply control simply press the control and alternate keys at the same time and the mouse will relinquish control okay so now we're going to install make sure the settings are right English for the language to install the time and currency should also be English the keyboard layout should be US should be the defaults and just like Windows 7 there's an install now button we can go ahead and click that the setup is now starting you'll notice that the virtual machine popped open a tooltip to uh, entice you to install the uh, virtual machine guest tools go ahead and just click remind me later to get rid of that and now we get to choose the proper installation we are going to choose server 2008 r2 enterprise full edition do not choose any of the other editions okay if we go with a full installation you will have the full graphical user interface experience like you want um, server core will only give you certain abilities everything will be done on a command line or within PowerShell um, for the sake of what we're doing we need to avoid that make sure that we choose the enterprise full installation do not choose data center or standard um, the functionality we need is within enterprise so make sure that we choose the enterprise this is the end user license agreement just like I've uh, said in the past with other operating systems that we install make sure you read this thing at least once go ahead and accept and we are going to choose a custom installation there has not been an installation done on this machine yet so we can let Windows decide how to format the partitioning scheme. Now to make the video as brief as possible I will go ahead and let the thing do its thing <laughs> let the install installation do its thing and I will pause to make the video brief. Okay as you can see uh, Server 2008 is booting. Setup is updating the registry and completing the installation. Okay, uh, once the installation is complete, you'll see that the user's password has to be changed before logging on for the first time. Okay, this is the root administrator account, the root administrator account what we're going to want to do is set the password to capital P at sign dollar sign dollar sign W0RD01 and confirm in the real in the real world you would not want to set a password like this however on a classroom lab server this is perfectly appropriate especially if uh, your instructor needs to get into the lab machine for some 
reason, maybe to grade assignments or something else, make sure that you put that password on there, a complex password for the root administrator account. Go ahead and continue. Changing password and then the password is confirmed as changed and the desktop will begin to load. And finally the desktop loads and the first thing that we're going to want to do we have not installed any server roles on this machine the network is still grabbing an IP address first thing we want to do is start Windows Update and let's get all all of the updates just the server updates do not install the optional updates the only reason you would ever want to install an optional update is if the update happens to be for a driver okay the prompt here is to turn on automatic updating um, I would recommend that you actually do okay it appears that Windows Update needs to be updated so let's go ahead and update Windows Update okay while the updates are being processed in the background I switched over to the initial configuration tasks window you'll see the server with a wrench as the icon in the taskbar now this is your opportunity to enter in a product code which we won't need to do for the lab environment we could also set a time zone which is something that we should do the server is going to need an accurate time so let's go ahead and change the time zone from Pacific time to Eastern time which should be minus 5 here we are UTC minus 5 and it says that the current date is the 28th of August 2014 current time 1235 in the afternoon I confirm that it is accurate I'll go ahead and OK that the updates are now processing in the initial configuration tasks there are a few more settings that you will want to modify um, one of the settings is a computer name this uh, automatically generated computer name that Windows Server 2008 places in here should be changed to something that's going to be very unique to your network okay um, for our lab environment we may change that later on for now the main priority is getting the server to be updated so make sure you download all the Windows updates and uh, at that point once that's complete we can continue on to the next activities.